What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Gina, J&G Family Life, and welcome to my channel. So, if you are new here, thank you for stopping by and clicking play on that video. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome, welcome, welcome back. Okay, guys, so today is a special day. I am doing a collab with a lot of other wonderful homeschool mamas and we're all talking about how to teach multiple children how do we do it in our own homes and so i'm so glad to be part of the, the collab and so here we go <laughs> from another homeschool mama to come and see me welcome to my channel i hope you enjoy the video don't forget if you are a subscriber of mine go and check out the other homeschool mama's channel to see how they teach their multiple children as well so we can all you know feed off each other and we can all get tips and tricks and you know how to really make this thing work for us while we teach and love on our children so guys, really, I can only tell you by experience, my experience, how I teach multiple children, well, my multiple children, and now we have added my grandbaby in too. So that just changed up everything. The whole schedule was just like thrown off and changed up. But I have a sixth grader going into seventh grade. He's 11. I have a uh kindergartner going into first grade he's five Jaden, and then i have a preschooler staying in preschool <laughs> she going from pre-k three to pre-k four and that is my daughter janaya and then now i just have kamari my grandson that's seven months that just joined us uh due to corona okay all right so the way that i deal with them i have a huge gap in age so my sixth grader he's very 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 independent so he does a lot of his work on his own and i really don't have to go back to him go back to him go back to him he don't even ask a lot of questions and he does very very good um on just being independent so uh as far as juggling him with the kids I don't have really any problems whatsoever with him. When we talk about things or when he need uh, help, it's usually at lunchtime. He'll be like, hey, mom, you know, and then he'll tell me what's going on. I'm like, oh, okay. And then we'll do his work like right after lunch. But uh, most of the things that he has going on, he kind of pushed to the end because I'm dealing with the little ones in the beginning after our morning basket. So we do our morning basket first, which includes like history, science, um, Bible, um any type of things like that and then we'll break off into our independent so when we do our independent study janiyah and jayton they're well they was three and four my jayton just turned five so what i would normally do is i would literally put him on the reading eggs app and have his headphones on and they sit right next to each other and then while he's doing his reading it app it just takes like 30 minutes like i have him do like 30 minutes so he'll do his um his phonics and then he'll do his uh math seeds so his reading eggs and his math seeds which is under the same app who is it what you need okay let's put it by the door back i'll get it um so what was i saying okay so while he's on his reading eggs because janiyah is only in preschool and of course it depends on the age of your child because janiyah is only in preschool um, I only take maybe those 30 minutes to go through her phonics, her numbers, and her um, her handwriting. So I'm able to knock out all of her stuff within 30 minutes while he's doing his reading eggs. So then when he's done, when, she's, when I'm done with her, why am I interrupting me right now? Who is it? Um, Give me a minute, okay? Okay. So it's like they know I'm in here. Like I can't get my own time. Mama, so y'all do you ever get your time alone? Like, ah <laughs> can't go for a refuge. 
Okay, anyway, I digress. So, it only takes me 30 minutes to teach her, to go through her three subjects and to do something hands-on, fun with her, and then she's done. So, after that, then I'll put the Reading Eggs app in her, put her headphones on, and let her do her uh, Reading Eggs, because it's two different um, apps on the app that she does hers, and then I'll work with him. And then... When I work with Jake, Jake usually takes a couple hours because he has a, a back of DVDs to do and things like that. So when I'm working with him, I work on his seat work and everything. And then I'll let him watch his DVDs. While he's watching his DVDs, then I'll go check on Xavier because Janiya's doing her Reading Eggs app. Jaden is working on watching his a back of videos. And so I'll go check on Xavier, you good? Most times he say, yeah, I'm good. Or he'll be like, want me to make lunch? You sure can make lunch. Let me just jot that down on your chart for life skills and just uh, clock those hours uh, on this, uh, <laughs> the core hours that we're working on. So I'll jot that, jot that down for him. So it's kind of like uh, juggling balls, trying to get everybody doing something. But oh my, 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 my. When Kamari came into the picture, he takes two naps a day, and it everything just went crazy. I'm like, shh, be quiet, baby's sleeping. Don't do this. Wait, how, how, how we gonna do this? So, with him, the way I end up flipping it and transitioning it over is when he's napping, we're doing all the work we can get done as far as quiet stuff. It's not no morning basket, no group stuff because the kids get loud. They like to play. You know, we just have fun with school, you know. And so I'm like, okay, so let's just do all of our quiet stuff while he's napping. And then when he wake up and after, after he eat lunch, which is earlier than we eat lunch, after he eat and get up, then we can do all of our loud stuff because he's in the room, he's up, he's listening, he's learning <laughs> and everything like that. And then when he go down for his second nap, that's when we do our independent reading. Like we have our quiet time, our reading corners, and everything like that. And then, you know, I'm reading to the, to the tots. Xavier is doing his real loud in his room somewhere. And then we kind of do it that way. But I had to figure it out because it was so, uh, it just threw me off. So y'all know when you get a new baby in the house, even though I didn't have a baby, I, a new baby came into the house and it just went crazy. So that's really how I did multiple children, just keeping one occupied as far as, school and then while the other one you work with that other one one-on-one -on -one. um because when they would work together at the table together if i had to walk away for a moment and come back they'd be under the table <laughs> jayden have his legs in the air on the chair and i'm like what are y'all doing you're supposed to be doing your work you're supposed to be doing you must be coloring your sheet you must be doing your math sheet and it never works out never works out so i was like okay what are we gonna do with this and so I would have to do that with them. Or I would have Naya go over in a corner and do puzzles while Jayton is over here working on his art or something like that. I would have to keep them separate unless we was in the room doing something together. So that is basically how I teach my multiple children and my multiple students. Um, and that's how we get it done around here. So that is it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe and comment below. How are you teaching your multiple children? Like, what are your tips and tricks and things? Because we can all learn from each other. Everybody read the comments and we kind of bounce ideas off each other that I know we ain't thought about. Um, so let us know. All right, guys. Well, I will talk to you on the next video. See you soon. Bye-bye.